Oh, there we are. We are yeah. live. It is I on. I see the live. I see the, the red. Live is happening. Man, it's a, it jumps straight to like 15 seconds. I don't know how it does that, man. I, I, I think I think it's slow on the uptake. Uh, it must be kind of like, you know, kind of like me, kind of like us sometimes. No. Yeah, uh, I'm a little slow on the uptake. I can't speed, believe uh, you asked me if I was ready, man, before you man, hit the I know. <laughs> Come on, man. I just want to make sure. Man, I came out the womb ready for this. <laughs> I was born ready for this, uh -oh. man. Ready, ready, ready. And so we, we were just kind of... We we're giving little secrets here that normally our little bantering in the very beginning is just us messing around on uh, on Facebook um, so that we can share this video, uh, which is kind of what I'm doing right now, actually. Um, All right, there we go. But uh, I, I think I don't know. It's live. It looks like it's live on mine. Um, it is live. I've shared mine. Um, did you? I did share it. Hopefully, it'll pop up. Did you get any feedback when I went over? Because I could hear. I had double streams going on. I don't think so. All right. Who knows? All right, man. we're jibber jabbering. Are we jibber jabbering? Well, we're this jibber jabbering, like, ladies about, and this gentlemen. Pre jibber jabber. We're giving people time <laughs> to like, you know, jump Get on. And on. That, that's what we're doing here. So if you're, you know, if you are, uh, if you're watching this right now, let me see. Let me see if I can share this thing, man. Yeah. We, I got to. I got to share. I got to share a button on mine, scheduled. man. It looks like I can share it, man. It looks like it's looks like it's happening, dude. Do it. Like it's going down. So yeah. So right now we're just babbling. We're just killing a little bit of time while everybody kind of jumps on. While everybody catches up. See if we jump straight into it, then all of a sudden people will be like, "Whoa, I missed the very beginning, and I don't even know who we got an extra face on the thing now." And, <laughs> and so we got to make sure that you know we give folks time to make sure we give folks time to jump on here, man. And then also it gives us time to to fiddle around, get situated, and, uh, get situated, make sure we share this thing in the proper context. Of all the contextualities Man, and ways this we can share this thing. This is this is gonna be a hot conversation. I can tell already because I'm already getting hot. I gotta roll my sleeves up. <laughs> man, you know, it, it's gonna be this is gonna be a good one. This is definitely gonna be a good one, man. I'm I'm looking forward to this. Uh all right. I'm looking forward to this tremendously. <clears throat> so uh let me see. I think I'm sharing this, man. I know I'm sharing this on, on my page, but uh all right. Well, uh, we got what do you think, man? Should, we, should we rock and roll? I think we're good. Let's do the thing. We got we got like an extra face on the screen and everything, man. We got I know to, what's going on. People, this, man. people are going to freak out. We got three <laughs> three heads on the screen. I know. They're going to be like, what's the deal? This is Mad Men and Masculinity, but we got uh, femininity on here. That's man. right. What's up with that? We got the mad lady. <laughs> so, hey, in case anybody doesn't know, which would be kind of weird if you are, especially since my name is like right down there, I am Kirk M. Samuels. And this guy over here, I am Jason B. Kendrick. Ooh, and we are the Mad Men of Masculinity. That's right, folks. We're just real men having real conversations for you. And tonight on the Ooh. Mad Men of Masculinity, we have brought a special guest, Mrs. Ooh. Debbie Wayne's coaching right extraordinaire. I'm going to point backwards. Right That's right. Middle. You got to yeah, wait. No, that <laughs> way. There we go. Right Which way? Debbie Which Wayne's, way? Would, you, would you introduce yourself to the Mad Men uh, crew? Hi, I'm Debbie Waynes. I am a life coach, widow coach, um, a grief coach, and I am really excited to be here tonight. Excellent, excellent. That is fantastic. And so, you know, let me rewind the clock a little bit. Matter rewind. of fact, JBK, like a day or two ago, you posted something along the lines of, I'm going to butcher it, but it says something along the lines of, uh, uh, don't don't help someone if you haven't been through it or something along those lines. Oh, yeah. So in other words, just some reference to some kind of expertise, like, you know, don't talk about stuff that, that, uh, that you don't know about. Yeah. That was ba and, basically, uh, don't judge an experience that you haven't been through yet. Right. And if you haven't been through it, then support others going through like it. Like if you don't know now, you know, kind of thing. Right. Like, don't, um, don't, don't be telling somebody how to heal if you haven't been through what they're going through was the gist right. of it. And you know, man, and that that kind of that kind of leads into into where we are here today. Um, be, even though we are the Mad Men of Masculinity, even though you know we speak man talk, and and you know a lot of our audience, a lot of the people that listen happen to be women, and so we you know we don't operate in a vacuum, man. A lot of the things that we say and a lot of things that we do, man, we you know we like to get different perspectives and different insights and all that kind of stuff, and so. I took the somewhat liberty of uh, of inviting someone on here today, and I, I, you know, I thought it'd be cool, JBK. And you, you was down with it, and um, and so, man, we have online today the one and only Miss Debbie Waynes. 
Um, I am so thankful we talked about, we haven't even met. We don't even really know each other other than here. She has um, no idea what she's getting herself she has into. She no idea what she's getting into. She's like in the middle of the fray with, and, and, she, and we put her right in the middle of the masculinity. <laughs> so this is going to be kind of weird. Um, but in a very good way, in a very good wholesome way. Cause we, sometimes we like to get, uh, an opinion from, from, uh, from outside of masculinity, which leans into masculinity itself. Every man has an X and a Y chromosome. Right. And so we have a little bit of both in us in terms of just down to our, our genetics. And so we like to get some perspective. And you posted something. This must have been a couple of weeks ago that really just kind of I'm going to it poked me. Ha <laughs> ha. It, 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 it poked me. And uh, and I thought, man, that would be interesting to kind of unpack with uh, with with the subject. And first of all, let me let me even before we go there, just the, the fact that we have you on here. Um, you know, obviously you're a subject matter expert on women because you are a woman and you've probably been one for a few years anyway. Just a few. <laughs> Just a few years. <laughs> but but one of the things that I admire about you, one of the things that I've noticed about you and your platform and the things that you do, uh, you do something very unique. I think you do it every morning. What is that? Uh, Monday through Friday, I do three things that I'm grateful for video. I... Gratitude really changed my life after I became a widow. Mm. And it's really what pulled me out of a very negative time in my life. Mm. And so I try to share gratitude with everyone because mm. it's such a simple practice, but it has the most profound impact on your life if you do it consistently. Mm. And, you know, in, in your, in your, um, in the way that you do that, I know you. I noticed you're pretty transparent. You even mentioned here just now. I mean, and, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, if I was watching correctly, I think you just kind of went through almost a. I don't want to say an anniversary, or it seems like you were reflecting on that just not too long ago. Yeah, it's actually coming up. This is the. It'll be the seventh year of the the death of or passing of my husband on mm. Sunday, mm. and this year I'm grieving differently. I've I've really hidden from the week of leading into his passing because mm -hmm. he um, passed of cancer, and you know we know that what toll that can take on somebody, and he went from this just vibrant man of 6'1", 250 pounds to, he probably weighed a buck 40 when, mm. when he passed away. Um, mm -hmm. I literally that night lifted him into bed. He collapsed. So um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a stout woman, but um, he, was, he was pretty small and frail and sick. And watching that transition, I've, I've never wanted to remember him that way. And so this year I'm, I'm allowing that to happen because I'm at a place where that grief, my grief is flowing and it's ebbing and um, I'm okay with remembering those memories now mm -hmm. and dealing with them and processing them. So I feel like it, the more transparent I am with that, the more encouraging I can be to other, other widows or widowers. Mm. Now, Thank being you for somebody, your vulnerability. Yeah. You know, being somebody who's Thank gone you. through that, um, I kind of brings us back to the topic tonight. I mean, mm -hmm. loving somebody, you know, loving, you know, we, we had put up loving a woman with her petals and thorns. And it seems to me, you know, and, um, you know, my father passed of cancer as well. And so there's definitely a, you get to a point of, of forgiveness and acceptance almost more mm -hmm. of loving them for the good and the bad and, and all the thing. And so I think that's probably the reason Kurt wanted to have you on here. I, I don't want to speak for this man, but. I actually have uh, I I have a question before the before the discussion. Okay. All right. The question I have, and I off the top of my head, as you were talking, I can think of several women that have either experienced a, a loss of a significant other of a spouse um, in that in that kind of that same context. Do you? And I would imagine that was very difficult for you to go through emotionally, spiritually, however you know physically, however that looked for you. Do you think it's possible for a woman to experience that and then to really um, to essentially to ever love again in that same kind of way? You know, I will tell you that that is what actually launched me into my widow coaching is about two years after Roy's passing. I was on some Facebook groups for widows and there were women on there that were seven, 12, 15 years down the road mm. and we're still, I can't move on. I can't love somebody else. And, and when I, when Roy passed, I was 44 years old. 
I don't want to live the rest of my life by myself, nor did he want that for me. Mm -hmm. And I just kept, you know, reading these things and thinking, I don't want to be this person. I, I need to take steps and get training and coaching. And then I want to help other women because I don't believe that any spouse, male or female, when they pass away, once their spouse that's living to live this horrible, lonely life. Mm. And I wanted to find ways to move forward and do that in a productive manner and then help other women and men do that. So mm. it's a, it actually launched me into my coaching business. So would that be a safe assumption that you think it's possible? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't think I will ever love another man the way I loved Roy because mm -hmm. no other man's going to be Roy, mm -hmm. but I can give the opportunity to a man to show himself to me and to love him for who he is. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I, I bring something else to the table because I have experienced forever in a day. I know what that is to take care of somebody until they take their last breath. Mm. And I know what an honor that is and what an impact that lives on your life. And I lost my mom when I was 18 and she had um, cancer also. Mm. And so I watched my dad care for my mom. Mm -hmm. So technically that's why I divorced my first husband mm -hmm. is because I was watching him and I'm like, you're never going to do for me what mm -hmm. my dad did for, mm -hmm. for my mom. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I wanted. And mm -hmm. I know that I have it in me to do that for another man. And, and I want to share that with somebody. Mm. Wow. And so us as men, and this is the kind of the, the, the discussion I wanted to unpack just a little bit here, but us as men, you know, as we get particularly into our maybe late thirties, forties, maybe even beyond, as we come into the lives of, of women from a relationship perspective, a potential relationship perspective, it's very difficult for us to find a woman that doesn't have a life experience, that doesn't have something um, in her, you know, just kind of emotional makeup and, and that sort of stuff. Um, and, and so when I thought about, and actually you posted it, I mean, it's, it's a meme and it says, and when you love her, don't just love her petals, love her thorns too. And so when, when, when we as men come into, um, in presence, in relationship, in all that kind of stuff, I mean, in, into whatever the word, whatever the, the word might be, when we come into the life of, of a woman that has her thorns, um, how might us as men approach that situation um, to be able to love her thorns as well as her petals? You know, I think one of my thorns is actually being a widow because I, I'm divorced once, I'm widowed once. Mm -hmm. It's much easier for a man to come in behind a divorce, I believe, because mm -hmm. you don't want that man in your life anymore, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you've chosen to move on. The only reason I'm single is because Roy died. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not single necessarily by choice. And I think that that, that can be considered a thorn. Mm -hmm. And I think patience, um, I think remembering that our past kind of mold us into the women we are, and we are emotional, crazy creatures, right? And and that's how we're made, right? We're 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 like Mother Nature. We're like the storm, right? And we need men to be the consistent, the strong, the the building that's been been built to withstand the the earthquake or the hurricane or the tsunami, right? You you guys are supposed to be our strength and our foundation mm -hmm. that that stands strong and lets us be a little crazy and just be like, baby, I love you. Um, I'm not sure what to do right now, but but I love you, and we're gonna get through this. <laughs> Yeah, that that definitely gets back to the uh, one analogies I like to use is you know the men, men are like the riverbanks. Well, the you know the masculine is a riverbank that gives a container, gives some boundaries, gives some border to the feminine so she can flow freely. But there is that boundary, like oh that's too far. But there is still that container within, and it's it's structured. Yeah, and sometimes that that bank needs to come to a narrow right, right? and then yeah. let us keep go back out. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a great analogy. Yeah, hold you in a little bit, and and so what I heard. And what kind of came to me listening to you and listening to Kirk was when you go through these things and when you have your thorns, when you have your experiences, and, and even from what you mentioned about the, the widows who have, have been, we're, we're still in mourning 15 years later, is it more about their healing 
to get them to the point of being able to accept a person into their lives. Because I know in my experience, sometimes we tend, you know, if you don't heal your wounds, you bleed on somebody who didn't cut you. And so right. it was like, what I think we're being, being the, the helping, healing men that we are, we tend to gravitate towards or draw in wounded women. And sometimes we don't know how to handle that. And so my question to you is, do you find it's better to look for women or be around women as a man looking for something future? We know everybody has their baggage, but are they healing it or working on it? Should that be one of our red flags if they're not, you know? Absolutely. I personally believe that whether you have a, a loss of a spouse or somebody that's just near and dear to your heart that you love so much, I, I believe that getting outside help and counseling or a coach or somebody like that, that isn't going to judge how you're healing, right? Mm-hmm. I think so many times, you know, I, I will tell you when, when Roy passed away, everybody was like, oh, mommy, you're so strong. You're so strong. You're so strong. Well, I was really strong when everybody needed me to be strong. And then when everybody else's life moved on, I fell apart. Yeah. And then I didn't have somebody to help me. I mean, obviously, I have all my good girlfriends and things like that. But I, I really needed to go out and seek outside help and people that like, like to your post that had been through what I've gone through. And I think so many times when we have loss, and I think as men especially, we don't seek somebody that's been what we've been through. We just kind of, men kind of hold it in. Well, women try to share it with everybody because we're talkers, right? But we're sharing with the wrong people. And so as a man, I do agree that if you get involved with a woman that's not trying to, to clean up her own mess, so to say, that's a red flag. It's, it's a, it's a thorn that's going to cut you. And you need, you need to find a thorn that, that you can kind of dull that that's not going to cut you. It might poke you a little, but it won't cut you. Well, and there's another analogy and I'm sorry, Kirk, I'll let you go in just a second, but those edges, those things that jagged edges that we get from our woundings, those can be the places that we stick, but there has to be that communication. There has to be a similarity However, like to your point, if you're, if you're not working on it, then it's too sharp and it's going to cut. And so, yeah, yeah that, that, that was kind of my thought. My question was, or as we were moving forward, being our age, being, being older, whatnot, looking for somebody to, to connect with, are you on the same path? Are you both healing? And can you come together and heal together? Right. And, and so that's right. one of the reasons I, I was excited to have you on because I wanted to, to run that by you from, you know, mm-hmm a coach's perspective and a woman's perspective as well. And, and especially somebody who's been through what you've been through. Well, and I believe, I mean, I I'm 51, I'll be 52 this year. And if I get involved with a gentleman and he's not working on his stuff, I, I there's, I don't have time to let him catch up. Right. It, he needs to be working on what he knows and recognizes as his own issues. And you know, I don't know what those would be, but if he's not working on them, I, I don't have, I, I don't want to spend the rest of my life fixing somebody. I want to spend the rest of my life nurturing and growing together and learning together, but I, I'm not going to fix him at 51. Right. You know, so, so JBK has his uh, riverbank uh, analogy metaphor. I, I use the, um, uh, the mountain to the cloud in that in that the, the the feminine that the she is the cloud the free forming flowing uh, constantly changing constantly moving shapeless formless yet very real and very tangent or tangible um thing entity and uh you know sometimes she rains sometimes she snows sometimes she's thundering and lightning and you know sometimes sometimes she blows some hot air at you. Sometimes <laughs> you know sometimes she twists and comes down, and it's a tornado, and then sometimes it's a hurricane. Sometimes it's shade, and um, and you know, but but at the same time, she's all of those things. And him, he, the masculine, being the mountain, being that thing that that she can uh, move and shape and form and shift around, but it still still provides some form of stability, some form of of uh, of, of structure, if you will, and even in the picture of a, of a rose and a thorn, you know, even though the rose has the thorn, it's still possible to hold the rose um, amidst 
amidst the, the thorns. And, and I think the secret to that is finding the space in between those thorns to, to hold her, um, whatever her thorns are, there's still space in between there, and there's space that, that your fingers can occupy to hold her. And it just requires um, some, some patience. It requires some, some studying. It requires some, you know, it, it requires some technique. Um, you know, but at the same time, I, I do think there's still room and opportunity to, to hold her, even though she has the thorns, because you're not going to find, like, you know, if it's a car, you're not going to find a 40 year old car with low miles. Um, <laughs> right? um, you do know I'm in the car business. Right? <laughs> well, I'm just saying. So, so it's a matter of what kind of miles are on that car, right? Are they, yes. you know, are they Uber, Lyft, you know, hard driving rental car miles or are they free right. miles where there's been maintenance and there's been care and all that kind of stuff? Right, um, right. And so, you know, but but in terms of her thorns, I like to picture the, you know, I, a, a man should not be afraid of her thorns. Mm -hmm. We should be man enough to approach it with the caution and care and concern to hold her in between her thorns, I believe. In the yeah, space. Absolutely. And, and, you know, using this week as an example for myself, if I was in a relationship right now, my grieving for Roy would not stop. I, I, I don't just this this time frame and memories don't just disappear. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't love the new man in my life less because I'm going through this grief period. And I know that I would need to be a very good communicator and you know, let him know that I need some space and I just need some time and I might be a little sad right now. And that doesn't mean that I don't love you or I love you less. I just, I have my, I have my thorns and, and I need you to love me around them just like you explained. Yeah, that's, and that's a great point that one thing that is beneficial for men when it comes to the feminine normally is the ladies communicate. They talk. They they will tell you what their wounding is. Men, most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> men right. are on the, on the same way. Men may not. You know, we still have our thorns. We have our stuff as well, but we may hide it. So as far as communication goes, that is so such so key. Because how are you going to find out where the thorns are? How are you going to find mm -hmm. out how to approach each other in a safe manner? And, and men, if you're not talking to other men and you're trying to get in a relationship and you're not healing your wounds, you're in, you're going to end up cutting and bleeding and, and, and taking that out on the next person that you're trying to have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it goes. So we may be a little more fortunate as men, because in most cases, the ladies may tell us what their, their thorns are, what their wounding is. They may not. But it, having that communication and being vulnerable enough as a guy, as a man to share that and open up that, that conversation is so key because how is she going to know? How is she going to know where, where our soft spots are, where our bru bruising and scars are? How are we going to find those connection points if we're not talking about it? And I think we do have an advantage being older, attempting today, attempting to come together because we do have experience. We do have our own wounding and scars and, and, and past experiences that we can share together and use as the glue. But mm -hmm. that doesn't happen without sharing. So I agree. It, and that was one thing I wanted to throw out because we do have a lot of ladies who who watch. So, you know, yes, we are talking about ladies and loving their petals and their thorns, but men, you have to expose your thorns. You have to expose those things as well so that there there is that common ground and there is that communication. Well, and I also think that ladies, um, I, I working with one of my coaching clients now ladies put all this color in the world right we we we're red and yellow and all the we're all these colors and men are so black and white and so when we're communicating a, a, an example would be one of your friends has a baby and what is the first thing your girl's going to or your woman's going to ask oh my gosh how much did it weigh when was it born how's mom doing was it cesarean what time and you're like they had a baby it's a girl <laughs> yeah. Right, boy or girl, right, What's the name? Yeah. right, right. Who so, alive? <laughs> I think that I think women need to understand that they need to um, just put make it basic. I, I, I men are very simple, right? I think you guys are very simple, and you 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 want to know how to love us, and we need to be able to tell you how to love us simply and just to the point, like you in one the 
the um, last episode I was watching, you guys were talking a little bit about love languages. I know my love language and I will flat out tell whoever I'm with that time is my priority. And if you can't give me the time that I want, we're not going to work. And, and it's simple. And, and that's OK if you can't. But it, you have to be I have to be willing to tell you that that's really important to me. I need words of affirmation. I need time. And I usually a man, you can usually tell what his love language is pretty quickly because you guys are simple, right? Yeah. You, you guys are very transparent for the most part. Yeah. Well, we're definitely predictable. I mean, yeah. we're, we're safe, but there's a combination to the safe. And that combination dial has a whole lot of different numbers on there, <laughs> whatever. Yes. But once you understand the combination, the combination is the combination. Yes. And and it's like, you know, it, yeah, it doesn't, it, the combination doesn't <laughs> <laughs> right. Where women, the day we, and the we may like lock, have a combination so. lock. We may have a key lock. We, mm -hmm. may, have, we may have all There's like a, a bio thing. There's, <laughs> yeah. a yes. There's a retina scanner. Yeah. There's a secret password. Yes. And then it changes every day. It's like the secure ID. It changes. It's constantly <laughs> changing. You got to yes. know like, uh oh, I got to pay attention to it yeah. to see what's happening. Um, but, I, you know, everything you said about women, I think, uh, I think, and, and I guess this conversation about men um, in, in the same context, it all comes down to work. Like if we're not doing mm -hmm. our work, then we're not aware enough to be able to have these conversations. We're not aware enough to be able to communicate. We're not aware enough to be able to to recognize that you you might be grieving differently this week, or you might be acting differently mm -hmm. this week because of your grief and the cycles and that the cycles of grief and stages of grief and that kind of stuff. And so maybe I need to give give her space. And so, but that all that comes from doing my personal work. I can't take it personal. Um, you know, because of because of where you are, what you might be going through today. Yeah, right. But one, and, and oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was Jason. just going to add on the, the one thing that we do have in common, whether we're men and women, we communicate differently. We, we may mourn differently. We may express differently. But the one thing we have in common, the one thing we need from each other is to be a safe place to communicate. Yes. And especially for wounded men, ladies, if you're not being a safe place for him to communicate, if you're not mm -hmm. allowing him to express whatever his wounding is, whatever his emotions are when he's ready to, which it won't be at the time you want it. It won't be the same way you want it. But if we are not being a safe place for each other to express without all the judgment, without all the trying to fix and all that stuff, then, you know, we're, 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 we're not giving each other a, a fertile garden to grow in. So mm. I have a, off of that, I have a question as a woman, mm. we always want details and we, we, we keep, probing and prying and what would you be your advice to women that do have a wounded man that might have some thorns how do we let them go about expressing themselves patience patience right. and space yeah because because men we have to have our cave moments and for us we don't heal by expressing we heal mm -hmm. by going in we heal by going to the cave we heal by going with other men and expressing with them but once we are given that time to go into our cave, then we can come out and express. What you don't want to do is, like you just said, try to over detail him and ask for all the details. He'll be he'll come back and say, no, I figured it out. It was da da da. Mm -hmm. And you may be like, well, what about this? And what about that? What about this detail? And no, he, he's figured that out. But mm -hmm. it's allowing him the space because what we tend to do as humans is try to love and support the other person as we want to be supported. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as men and women, that can really backfire in our faces if we're not careful. Yeah. He, and he's not like you. He's not going to talk his way into the solution or talk his way into the, the revelation or whatever. He's going to process his way into that. And that mm -hmm. process probably doesn't involve communication. Now, me and JBK are great communicators. I mean, we we're talkers, right? This is this is just how we are. How what we're we wired. Do. But at the same time, as men that's not the way we process. We're not processing when we have these conversations. We're just, you know, we have kinda, processed, <laughs> we have processed and we're just, you know, we're, we're flushing it out. We're just communicating. We're sharp, iron sharpening iron kind of thing. And so he needs to process it. And the processing is probably not going to come through, through communication or let's talk this out kind of thing. It just doesn't happen. And a good so, way to be aware of that when you ask him questions or if once he gets triggered, you'll see him energetically and even physically retreat. Mm -hmm. And so allow him like, oh, OK, I can see you're triggered, you know, go in the garage, go clean mm -hmm. out the gutters, whatever it is you need to. Because most of us will be doing something menial while we're processing. 
cleaning the car, mowing the lawn, something like that. So mm-hmm. allowing us to do that. And then, you know, there, I also used in the last one, uh, last episode, the, the, the leash analogy. Because men, mm-hmm. as, as far, you know, we, people call us dogs and some of it's true, but the leash analogy is true because we always need as part of our primal needs is the, the sense of freedom. So we'll need to run to the end of our leash and if you allow us to run to the end of our leash, we'll get to the end of our leash, we'll have our moment of freedom, and then we'll come back and, and then we'll run back to you. Mm-hmm. But if you keep yanking the leash as we're trying to run to the end of the leash, then we never get to that sense of freedom. We'll it come back if you're thing. safe. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. come back if you're, if you're safe. I mean, um, if you're not safe, then probably not. Then Probably start probably, chewing through the leash. Probably to get safety. <laughs> and, and, and for men, freedom is, is safety to a degree. So yeah. feeling the sense of freedom is, is very, very important. That's a great question. You know, I think that sometimes women are always putting out there what they want from their man. I want you to communicate more. I want you to talk more. You need to listen to me, blah, 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 right? And we're always, as women, wanting men to conform to what we need. And sometimes I think we forget that we also need to conform to the way you communicate. And that what you you both just said was a really good reminder of that. Mm. That, you know, that that's so important. And I'm hearing this, especially through the context of this this platform. I'm hearing from more and more women that and it's kind of a surprise. I think it would be a surprise to a lot of men that a lot of women do care and a lot of women do want to honor. They do want to serve. They do want to take care of of their man or a man or whatever. And they want to, you know, I, I mean, it, it's I think it's easy today to, to forget that um, mm-hmm. that, you know, that there are a lot of women that generally care about men mm-hmm. and about men's stuff and, and these types of conversations and, and mm-hmm. that, that women care about what men want and and how to how to interact and how to live in connection and in relationship. Yeah, uh, I think we're all just as frustrated. I know there's men who really want to love their women and support them and they don't know how and vice versa. We get a lot of women who are like, I really want to help him and support him and be there mm-hmm. for him and communicate with him, but I don't know how. And so it's mm-hmm. just these awareness pieces, this is one of the reasons I love this work is watching couples who have been struggling, watch the shoulders drop and watch them relax when they realize just a little bit of awareness, just a little bit of, of acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't mean more work. It actually means less work when you know how your, your partner communicates mm-hmm. and you yeah. know what they need. Wow. Yeah. So let's so let's bring this let's line up on the runway here. Let's runway, uh, let's, let's, runway let's, 23 you know, south. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> runway two, three left. Um, there we go. But uh, so so in the context of this conversation of loving someone, well, let, let's make it even more specific of a man loving a woman in spite of her thorns, loving her petals in spite of her thorns. Or even because uh, of her thorns. Or even because of her thorns, mm-hmm. uh, in the midst of her thorns, um, you know, loving her thorns, those sorts of things. And so, so I mean, Debbie, what would you leave, uh, what would you leave this conversation with in terms of, I, I guess, to, to, to men maybe, but maybe even to women as well in terms of what that would look like. You know, I think we always have to go back to remembering we are the balance for each other, right? The the female is going to have all these emotions and, and truly that's what makes her soft and vulnerable, mm. right? And, and Sometimes I think we get so caught up in the the emotion and a lot of women don't know how to express that and we 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 don't communicate well and we get so caught up in that that we forget that it's truly a softness to her that's making her come out and be emotional emotional and vulnerable and men need to to remember that that they're their refu- refuge and they're being that way with you because in some ways they feel safe with you Right. And, Mm. and if you can take a step back and go, okay, she's a little crazy, but, but she's my crazy and she's soft and feminine. And once this storm moves by, I'll just let it move by. And, and that soft loving woman that I, I love so much will be back. Mm, That's good. (laughs) JBK. What about you, man? Well, I mean, it just, being, I mean, to go back to the analogy, whether you want to use the riverbanks or the flagpole or the, the, the mountain in the cloud, I mean, as the masculine, we're there to be there as that loving mm-hmm. support, as that foundation for the feminine to flow within. And if she doesn't feel safe with you and she's not expressing and being a little bit emotional and nuts, then that's a sign that you're not being that foundation for her. 
and vice versa, ladies. If he's not even opening up to you or, or letting you know what's bothering him, then he doesn't feel safe expressing himself with you. And so these are little signs and it's about communication. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. I am firmly convinced after all these years and doing all this work and all my study that communication is the number one thing in relationships to make them last and make them work. And if you are not able to communicate with each other, if you just don't have those personalities that mesh up, mm-hmm. it might be time to, to look elsewhere. And so make that your priority. Because how are you going to talk about your thorns and your woundings and your jagged edges if you, mm-hmm. if you can't communicate? Yeah. What yeah. do you think, Kurt? And I, I think, you know, it starts with doing your work. It starts with doing the work that, that you can to bring your wounds to scars. It's mm-hmm. one thing to have a wound. It's a totally different thing to have a scar. You can offer someone a scar, mm-hmm. um, but you don't want to bleed all over somebody to have your wounds. So you got to do that personal work. Mm-hmm. And then, then ideally, you're able to communicate where you are, you're able to communicate effectively with that other person. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, the big revelation for me here tonight also is not to shy or run away from a woman that has scars, that has uh, thorns rather, not scars, but has thorns rather, because uh, from, from a lot of men, they could look at a woman and say, oh, you know, she's had this happen and this happen and no way, you know, I can't even, there's not even room for me to fit in that. But so to me, it's revelation that, you know, in spite of her story, um, in spite of her thorns that that you know she still may desire to be held um, like the beautiful rose that she is. So um, so Debbie, we have a lot of women that listen to this and and there are women that that are probably listening right now and they're saying, I really like the way she thinks. Um, I like her story. I like I mean her vibe. Uh-huh. they they might be thinking, there's something about her that I feel like I want to connect with her. How in the world can people get a hold of you if they want to reach out to you and connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm on Facebook at Debbie Wayne's Coaching. You Wayne's is W A I N E S. We switched. We yeah. switched. Hello. Oh, <laughs> move around. She, she's the woman. She's flowing. She, she never stays the same. She, uh, the yes. woman moved. The man didn't move, but the woman moved. <laughs> Y'all saw that, right? She moved. Yes. She swapped around. The combination changed. Anyhow, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I'm on um, Facebook, um, Debbie Wayne's Coaching. And then on Instagram, I'm C O L O Life Life Deb, Life Coach Deb. So Colorado Life Coach Deb. Gotcha. So, and I'd love to. Um, have anybody reach out to me if they have questions or comments. I can't wait to see all the comments that have come up through all of this. You guys are doing great work. I'm actually going to go back and watch some of your other episodes. I've only watched a couple and um, they're already very impactful. And I'm going to make sure all my gentlemen friends know about you all. And ladies too. We have a lot yeah. of, most of the yeah. people that give us feedback are ladies. So that's because um, that's what we do. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what we do. And I think you all are also curious about the stuff that men talk about, the stuff that men think about and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, what, what would you say you specialize in, in terms of working with women, like, or your, a lot of your background, a lot of things that, that you generally tend to work with women with? Um, pretty much anything. Uh, I, I do definitely, I, I called myself a death worker. Um, for a while, and that freaks people out. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm freaked out right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of creepy. I want to move over yeah. one more time. Can yeah, you move so, over again. Move me, right? move me over right. one more. Let's swap um, me and him. <laughs> so, I, you know, I do work with a lot of widows, but actually, I, two of my most recent clients were women that wanted to get um, healthy, just healthy in general. And so, I had two women that had never been in a gym wow. because they thought that they would be judged, and they thought that that's where all the pretty people went. And I'm like, okay, we're just going to walk into a gym. Mm -hmm. So just about anything, but I definitely have a passion for loss and grief. Um, I've had a lot of it in my own life. And I really feel like I look at death differently. It's just part of life. Mm -hmm. It's our inevitable. You can even get away with not paying taxes, but you can't Mm -hmm. get away with not dying. So and let's not forget that, you know, divorce is a death of a relationship. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so that's a loss and that has its own stages of grief. And so, you know, none of us, a, a lot of us are are, um, ha, are, are included kind of in that circle. And so, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it, that that's that's a very real thing. I know there are a lot of guys, even ladies that that they look at JBK and they's like something about that guy. He looks like somebody that would be like a connection catalyst kind of mm-hmm. guy. <laughs> and 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 they look at JBK and they say, Jay, this guy, Jason B. Kendrick, I really want to work with him in the area of my connection, my communication, and all those kinds of things. JBK, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, man, how in the world would they do that? 
Well, I'm easy to get a hold of. You can comment on this video. You can catch me on Facebook slash Jason B. Kendrick. You can go to jasonbkendrick.com. You can get on YouTube and look me up. You can go on Amazon and look me up. And you'll find my books. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. If you go on uh, Google and look me up, there might be a, a few other. So make sure you don't forget the B. But there's other Jason Kendricks out there. But make sure you put that B in. You'll find me. I'll be the top one. And yes, I am the Connection Catalyst. I am committed to working with the father-son relationship and connecting with families and, and family members to create a more loving world, one person at a time, one couple at a time, one family at a time. And I know sometimes I get busy. And I know this awesome dude who is my brother from another mother, who is the intimacy incubator, who is Kirk M. Samuels right over there. This guy right here is awesome. And he works with. I can be kind of dope sometimes. <laughs> um, and, uh, but with strength, wisdom, gentleness and mercy, I co-create a world of intimacy and unconditional connection by teaching and inspiring 1 million men specifically. I end up working with, I've been in communication with a lot of women lately, but 1 million people, how to be free in every area of their life so that they can be free to relate, free to connect and free to have all the intimacy that they want in life. And uh, man, I'm pretty easy to find. I'm Kirk M. Samuels everywhere. 720-515-6536. My phone number, I'm all over Facebook and everywhere else. So pretty easy to find. Um, and so, uh, so we are out here. Uh, doing our thing. And of course, if you like this, like, subscribe, all this other kind of stuff, tell somebody, share this on your page, um, like the Mad Men and Masculinity page. Uh, I mean, you know, connect with us and all that kind of stuff. We are here and we want to do these, have these conversations just to, uh, just to help people. Uh, we, you know, when we say mad, mad men and masculine, we're not mad, like angry. We're mad, like the good crazy yeah, uh, we're trying, about the we're idea trying to change the world here. And you know, to change the world. Only ones that can change the world that are crazy enough to think they can do it. <laughs> and we need your help because we don't always know what to talk about, even though Kirk yeah. and I can talk a blue streak for a week. Uh, we want to talk about what you want to talk about. So yeah. comment, share, send us topics. If there's something that's bothering you that's on your mind, yeah. let us know. Let us talk about it. Let us cover it. And if yeah. we don't know, we can find people like Debbie or some of these other amazing women out there that can help us and, and come together. So we're here for you. Absolutely. Utilize us. Debbie, you are fantastic. We thank you so oh, thank much you. for your time here. We love your, I, I already know how he feels. I mean, we were both, we love your perspective. We love your approach. We love the work that you do. We really appreciate who you are and what you're doing in the world. Uh, JBK, man, I love you, man. You're my brother from another you, brother. brother. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, we will see everyone later. Y'all stay connected. Y'all stay, y'all stay related. Y'all stay bringing everything together. We are the mad men of masculinity. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>